Hey guys, we got a quick video this time. What you're seeing here is a uh, video of a 2GR head being cut in half. It was sent in by one of the viewers and I'm going to use it as an opportunity to inspect the channels inside the head and check out the wall thicknesses and whatnot. Check out what the opportunities are for porting and polishing this head without going into water channels. As far as I can tell, this head was money shifted. There's rockers that went all over the place and uh, there's a little bit of damage. Uh, so let's make the best of it. Let's turn it into some chips. Now that it's done being cut, we've got it mounted on the mill right here. We've got the other part here. I'm gonna come up with some other cuts to do on this as the video goes on and see what we can find that's interesting here. So if we look here, about the thinnest part we're seeing so far is eh, just a hair over four millimeters on the intake side. And it's got kind of the same thing going on on the exhaust side. Um, now, of course, on the intake side, you can port this a little bit more than you can on the exhaust side. You just need more bulk there. So at a minimum, we're looking at, you know, it, this is looking like it's the minimum wall thickness they probably spec everywhere. So you probably have at least, you know, a millimeter around every wall. Um, but what I'm really curious of here is you see these two water channels. That's the first thing we're going to go for is where the port does this right here where there's that sharp inner curve and that sharp inner curve here. How much space is there right there? So let's go ahead and cut down to that. So we're not quite where we want to be yet, but we can see there's a massive amount of coolant flow right around the spark plug. And as you can see down here, it reaches way down into the threaded area, especially since the only hot spark plug we have available for this application is out of the uh, 8ARFE. It's the only one that's got that long of a reach and the same size threading and everything. Yeah, it looks like one more crank and we'll be in the middle of the exhaust port. The intake port's a little wider, so it might take a little, just a hair more. So we're about the midpoint for the exhaust now, and we can see right at the tightest point, about five and three quarter millimeters. So you wouldn't want to reduce this much before you hit into the water channel, and it's a little hard for you to see, but that water channel does seem to go around. It's definitely direct, directly connected to this gigantic hole right next to the spark plug, and you can see it's even up here. So there's definitely water cooling right around the valve guide also. And while we're here, let's see. Yeah, it's probably about 12 and a half degrees on the exhaust. Eh, probably about that same 12 and a half degrees on the intake. So looks like we've got about a 25 degree split between the intake and the exhaust valve. Um, we got to cut down just a little bit more to get to the halfway point on the intake. Let me take care of that real quick. So here we can see on both sides, this part here, you, you're really not going to want to cut away from here. Actually here it gets, it's getting awfully thin. Yeah, that's the thinnest spot so far, three and a half millimeters. And let's see, we've got, on the short radius, we've got seven millimeters here on the intake. So five and three quarters here, seven millimeters here. Essentially, you know, there's probably a fair bit of room here. You know, I can't guarantee that it's actually gonna add flow, but there is room to port this here. Um, you can definitely, you know, clean this up here. It's a pretty classic thing to do. Um, this, this here though, you're gonna wanna be careful when you smooth this bump out. Don't take a whole lot out here. Um, same thing going on here. If, if you do anything with this at all, and I probably wouldn't, uh, don't go too deep. So I think that's all the value we're gonna get out of cutting this one. Um, let's go ahead and cut from a different angle. So the next thing I want to cover is these intake ports 
They look rather massive because they're actually at an angle on this opening here. So I want to cut it directly perpendicular to the port just to get a better feel for what that looks like. And then we'll get some measurements once we're there. Let's get rid of that burr. Makes the port look even smaller. All right, a bit more of a fair shot. So the port we can see here, actually you guys probably want millimeters. About 58 and a half. By, yeah, let's call it 30 by the time you get into there. I'll put the math on screen, but that feels like it's about a 40 millimeter diameter pipe equivalent if it was round. So let's see what happens with it as we keep going down. So five millimeters down, the port's pretty much the same area. Looks like it's, it's going that way slightly, probably because I just don't have the angle 100% right. But it's, uh, it's maintaining size so far, so let's keep going. So it looks like we're, we're starting to shrink vertically and we're starting to expand horizontally. Um, without math, it looks like very likely maintaining cross-sectional area. So another five millimeters. Okay. So at this point, it's starting to come in, form two distinct ports. Feels like we probably still maintain cross-sectional area. Yeah, so we're expanding by a couple millimeters. You can see in the middle, we're down to 27, but we're still almost at that 30 millimeters there. So let's keep going. Just continuing right along. We're almost at 63 millimeters wide. Center's down to 25.7. And, oh, actually that's interesting. Pretty sure that narrowed down slightly also. It wasn't expected. Sixty-three point seven. Twenty-three point six. And twenty-seven and a half. I mean we're definitely seeing it divide into two separate ports. Sixty-five, twenty-one point six, and twenty-seven. Sixty-seven. Now this is almost disappearing here. Eighteen and a half. So I find it interesting that the ports are shrinking vertically here. Thankfully, there's still plenty of meat here to take off from the top of the port to get a better transition. Uh, that's certainly something that might be worth trying when we're porting these things. All right, let's see. Sixty-nine point one seven, twenty-six point seven eight, and not a whole lot of point left to measure this, but twelve and three quarter. I think that'll disappear in the next one. All right, that's kind of a funny face. So at this point, we're in kind of these D-shaped ports. I bet they're the same, but let's see. 32.8, 32.8, yeah, 26.8. <clears throat> so far, my thought is the, uh, the roof of this and all the way out can likely be modified and as well as that valve guide can probably be kind of cut a little bit out of the way so 
That's just my thoughts though. Let's go down another five millimeters. Thirty-three. Let's see. If we were to continue the D shape, it'd be about twenty-nine, but it's closer to twenty-six. But they did make the port wider to make up for this protrusion, so maybe it doesn't need to be taken out completely. Just a little bit. Three and a half, twenty-five point seven. So yeah, so the bottom is actually starting to run away from the top. I don't think there's any major surprises yet. Still interesting though. So the valve guide flew off here. Thirty-three. Then, yeah, I mean it's hard to tell here with where the valve guide should be, but yeah, that yeah, gives you a number right there. Not a whole lot left to see here, but you can see. Let's see, thirty-three. So we're kind of maintaining that width. Um, I mean, at this point, this measurement. The port, we're not really even perpendicular to the port anymore, so it's not really worth a whole lot. But the big thing to see here is, do you see how thin it's getting up here? So there's, you really got to be careful when you're porting this thing out. Granted, this is intake, and this is coolant on the other side, so it can, this can get a little thinner, a millimeter or two if you were daring. Um, but really, I'm, I'm starting to think that <clears throat> Most of the gains are going to be at the top and maybe cleaning up this bottom radius a little bit, but thankfully there's plenty of room to clean up that bottom radius. Looks like it gave us an opportunity right here. Wasn't expecting to get these measurements, but might as well get them while we're here. So, intake valve seat. Let's see. Looks like... 38.8 OD and 33.2 ID. So should already have this number, but yeah, 2.66 wall thickness. So not a whole lot of extra space here if you wanted to go to an oversized valve without having to change the seat. Uh, but there is room to go to a bigger seat. And we can see, it looks like when they were machining the machining the seats, they went down a little bit. Um, the transition, super smooth, everywhere I can see. So somebody did care when they were putting this together. All right, I'm going to take a second and hack some of this stuff off so that we can flip the part over. So I just finished cutting off the rest of the intake ports, and I found this little guy in here. It's obvious that Toyota has spent some time in analyzing the flow in there. There's, there's a whole lot going on inside. Anyways, just thought you guys would find that interesting. So let's mount it on the other side and do the same thing with the exhaust. So the first thing to note with the exhaust ports is headers normally go straight out, but looking at this, it's, it should have been painfully obvious before, but they really should point up by about 22 and a half degrees or so. Um, that would just flow straighter. Size the port at the opening is, let's see, so 35 and three quarter, 35.8. So that port's actually gonna be slightly oval when we get into it. Nothing really to see on this first step here, other than the fact that we're definitely getting into an oval port. Getting there. One more step and we'll be able to get to actual port dimensions. All right, we're starting to get into that D shape here again. 
So 32.6 by 34.2. Lots of meat here to port, but we're soon, we're really quickly going to get into a water channel, I believe. One point eight here, three point seven eight. Thirty one point four and thirty five. Thirty six point eight, thirty and a half. And note we're we're 30 millimeters down here from keep in mind the port was angled from here and this is the first time we're really starting to see something come get come close and even that is seven and a half millimeters so definitely lots of room to expand this port 35 millimeters down and it's looking like the top of this port we you're not going to want to take anything off the top of that port so 30.1 by 40.2. Yeah, let's see what it looks like when we keep going, but I don't think there's gonna be much room up there. 45.9, it's starting to pinch out in the middle there, 29.16, but kind of go here, yeah, get a little more. Seven and a half. Fifty one point six. Fifty six point eight. Twenty five and three. Fifty three Twenty point eight. And 27.6. And we're getting another smile. So you can see as we're starting to get into that short radius, this is where we had seen before. There's just not, yeah, 6.35. So exactly a quarter inch material there. Not sure how comfortable I'd feel knocking that down too much on the hot exhaust side. And by the way, we're 60 millimeters down. Weird shaped ports. Let's see, 26 by 28. It landed right where the valve guide starts. So 25.6 and 26.7. So interestingly, the port's getting bigger where the valve guide is. Obviously, Toyota spent a lot of time optimizing this thing. Twenty-five. We'll get one more cut. We'll get into the valve seat when we do that. Won't be able to go edge to edge. VFD said, nope, too much load. So that gives us the whole view of the port anyways. So personally, I found this interesting. I mean, there was nothing earth shattering to be found in here, but it was still interesting. And I still have cylinder number one. So I could think of a couple ideas to do with this, but I figured that you guys would probably even come up with even better ideas. So if you can figure out what would be a good idea to do with this, leave it in the comments, I'd appreciate it. And we'll go from there. I'd also really like to do it on a 2A RFE motor also. Um, so if any of you have a 2A RFE motor that's been money shifted and you're willing to donate it to the cause, I'd appreciate it. The ports on this thing are just absolutely enormous compared to the 2GR. So that's almost 60 millimeters by almost 40 millimeters right there. And the exhaust ports are equally large also. There's 43 by 34. So be really interesting to do to this, but right now I don't have a spare 2 AR head, so we're just going to have to wait a bit. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.